insert pictures and other types of images into your publications will be one of the most important things you learn in this course. Images and graphics are key to making your publications attractive. However, there are so many methods for inserting images and so many ways you can alter those images to make them fit with your presentation that it's going to take more than one lesson for us to teach you how to do it successfully. In this lesson, we're going to cover the many methods you can use to insert images into publications. Specifically, we're going to cover the tools Publisher gives you to import images, such as pictures and clip art. The next lesson will cover formatting those pictures and clip art for the publication. Anytime you want to insert an image into a publication, you'll go to the Insert tab on the ribbon. And this is the Insert tab right here. You can use the Insert tab to insert all types of things into your publication, and we'll cover those things as the course progresses. For now, though, we're going to focus on pictures and clip art. There are four methods that you can use to insert pictures and clip art into your publications. You can right-click on an image and click Copy. You can do this for images you find online or on your computer. Then, click in your publication and select Paste. Or, you can use pictures you have saved on your computer, external drives, or memory cards, such as from cameras. Or, you can import pictures you find online using Bing, Facebook, and other sources. And lastly, you can import pictures to the scratch area. The method you use will depend on the pictures or clip art you want to use, as well as where the images are located. We're going to cover methods 2, 3, and 4 in this lesson because you've already learned how to copy and paste, method one, earlier in this course. So first, let's talk about inserting images from your computer or external drives. Anytime you want to insert anything into your publication, chances are good you'll find the appropriate button under the Insert tab. The picture tools are grouped in the Illustrations group on the ribbon. To insert a picture into a publication you have stored on your computer, move the cursor to a place in your publication where you want the picture to appear, and then simply click on the Picture button. A window will then open, allowing you to navigate to the picture on your computer. Locate the picture you want to use, click on it, and then click the Insert button. You can then drag and drop the picture to the location where you want it in your publication. You can also resize it, and add special effects that we'll cover in the next lesson. You can also insert Microsoft Office clip art, images you find using Bing search, and images from your SkyDrive into a publication. To do this, go back to Insert and click on the Online Pictures button. When you click the button, the search window appears. If you want to search for clip art, type in a description of what you're looking for. You could use keywords such as coffee, woman, shopping, and so forth. We're going to type in coffee. Then you can either hit enter or click search. And you can see our search results appear. Select the picture you want by clicking on it, and then click insert. And then your image appears once more in your publication. Now to search for a picture using Bing, go back to online pictures, go to the Bing search, and search just as you did before, and we'll look for a coffee again. As you can see here, Microsoft lets you know that the images shown are licensed under Creative Commons. And if any of you don't know what that means, Webopedia defines Creative Commons as a licensing concept created by Creative Commons that builds upon traditional copyright practices to define possibilities that exist between the standard all rights reserved full copyright and public domain no rights reserved. A Creative Commons license lets you dictate how others may use your work. The Creative Commons license allows you to keep your copyright, but allows others to copy and distribute your work provided that they give you credit, and only on the conditions that you specify. For online work, you can select a license that generates some rights reserved, or a no rights reserved button and statement for your published work. So all of that said, make sure you check the copyright to be sure you can use the image. To avoid copyright issues, either use your own images, images that are in the public domain or have no copyright, or purchase images from stock photo sites, where you'll receive a license with the image. In addition to inserting pictures from Bing Search, you can also insert pictures stored on your SkyDrive. Click Browse, and then find the image you want and click the Insert button. To insert images from Facebook or Flickr, click on the Online Pictures button again, and then for Facebook, click on the Facebook button at the bottom of the window, and click Connect. You'll be prompted to sign into your Facebook account. Enter your information and then log in. Once you're logged in, you'll see this screen. Click Done. 
And then you'll see Facebook listed with all the other locations where you can search for pictures. If you want to add pictures from Flickr, click the Flickr button at the bottom to connect to your Flickr account. And again, it will take you through all the steps to sign in and add Flickr. Now what about inserting multiple pictures using the scratch area? Publisher 2013 gives you the power to insert multiple images into a publication at one time. Instead of inserting one at a time directly into your publication, you can now insert multiple images. Publisher will deposit multiple images into the scratch area. You can then simply drag and drop images from the scratch area into your publication. Let's show you how it works. Go to Pictures under the Insert tab, and then locate the images on your computer. Now hold down the Control key as you select the images you want in your publication. Click the Insert button. As you can see, the images now appear in the scratch area to the right of our publication. Now go to the View tab, and check the box to view the Graphics Manager. The images in your scratch area are listed here as well. Under the Picture Tools Format tab, you can check Arrange Thumbnails. This will arrange the images in your scratch area. Now what about creating a placeholder for images? An image placeholder does just as the name implies. It basically reserves space in a publication where an image will be inserted later. This can be really useful if you have a basic layout in mind but haven't decided on your images yet. So for example, sometimes when you're creating a publication, you may want to design the page layout first. Perhaps you want to create the text boxes for text and draw squares where the pictures will be. In other words, you want to get the layout as you want it before you start adding the elements. It's easy enough to draw a text box then add text later, as we'll learn later in this lesson. However, if you just draw a square shape to represent a picture, you'll have to go back later and delete the shape and then insert and format the picture. That's a lot of extra work. Instead, you can add an image placeholder. To do this, go to the Insert tab and click on the Picture Placeholder button. You'll see a bounding box appear with an image icon at the center of it. The image icon, as you can see, has the illustration of a mountain on it. You can drag the image placeholder where you want it to appear, and you can also resize it. Make sure that you're clicking on the bounding box and not on the image icon. In addition to dragging the image to resize, you can also go up here to the ribbon and enter your dimensions manually. When you're ready to insert a picture, Go to the View tab and open the Graphics Manager if it's not already open. Hover over the placeholder in the Graphics Manager. You'll see a downward arrow. Click on that arrow and select Insert Picture into this frame. And then find the picture on your computer. You can then resize and crop the image as you learned to do earlier in this course when using the Graphics Manager.